Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM's revenue application for the coming three-year tariff cycle has been published for comment by NERSA. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the next steps. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. The MYPD6 submission has already caused much consternation. Yes, <coughs> the background to that really, the fact that before ESCOM, uh, well before it's published by NERSA for public to see. Eskim goes through a consultation process uh, with the National Treasury, SALGA, and obviously when some stakeholders within that grouping saw what was in that application, it got leaked into the public domain. So for many months now, we've been no we know about this 36 to 44 percent hike that's coming from next year, or potential hike that's coming from next year. And that comes from the application. The 36 percent is what Eskom is applying for a liable revenue of about 445 billion rand. And once that's translated after looking at you know, what demand will be and demand in the application is falling, uh, then it will go, translate to a 36% a hike from April 1 next year for direct customers. Um, those, those are municipalities. But then the municipal year kicks in on the 1st of July. So the municipalities have to claw back those months they haven't uh, haven't re regained the money from the uh, the hike from their customers, and that's why it's this 44% hike on the municipal average across the municipalities. It will be different from municipal area to municipal area, so that's obviously caused a lot of anxiety in South Africa. Uh, we've already seen the Democratic Alliance launch a campaign around this. They've got petitions being signed in opposition to these hikes coming through. We've already had a parliamentary debate uh, on this amazingly. Look, it was framed differently. It was looking at the, the regulatory clearing account. Um, um, there's an element that's p that ESCOM's allowed to claw back from previous re revenue determinations that will be in potentially included or liquidated in this coming financial year. And the debate was whether that should even be considered. But, it, but the d discussion went way broader than that. Can South Africa afford what effectively would be a, a historically high a one year hike. <coughs> and you can imagine in the parliamentary debate, the opposition was intense across political parties. But with, say, for instance, the ANC erring on the side that we need the regulator uh, to remain independent. And we mustn't forget that we need to um, uh, have s um, some move to cost reflective tariffs. Uh, there, there was more of a view that uh, you know we ha there has something has to give. We as a society can't bear uh, this hike, given where we're coming from with a huge, you know, we're just coming out of a hugely inflationary environment, and that is now softening. We're just about to have low, or getting into a lower interest rate cycle. What will this mean for our economic recovery and just for the affordability of poor households, but all households? And also, what will it mean ultimately for municipalities as those households and businesses that can afford will you know, migrate as much as possible away from these hikes? <coughs> what are some of the other key points made in the documents? I think one of the innovations uh, definitely this time around is that it's associated with, it's not quite an unbundled tariff, but we have visibility of what each element um, of the Eskom business, which we know is in the process of vertically separating is asking for and I think that's very important so we know what generations asking for the bulk of it uh, about 225 billion we know what uh, transmission is asking for and we know what distribution is asking for this is important because we are moving into this world of separated businesses and that's a very important also to provide more visibility uh, of what the different divisions are asking for and what they need for the for the coming uh, period this uh, I'm, I'm talking about next year but this is actually a three-year application so they're looking ahead three years and what they, they need for the business so after the 36 percent hike there's sort of an 11 percent and 9 percent assuming that the 36 percent hike is embedded so we get that visibility for the first time and why it's important is especially for the national transmission company south africa and the distributed entity these globular amounts have gone to eskom um, and they've always been separated, you know, this is what is for transmission, but that hasn't really flowed through. And I think having the visibility now right up front is there's going to be much more pressure on Eskom to make sure those amounts are ring-fenced and, and are dedicated for the purpose for which they're being raised, that revenue is being raised. 
you know, with that we've had this massive underinvestment, especially in transmission and distribution, as the generation business has absorbed more and more money as it's been failing operationally and as it's had to use more diesel, for instance, which was never really budgeted for. So having a ring-fenced amount for distribution and for transmission and having visibility of that's an important innovation. It's not a fully unbundled tariff, but it, it gives us that, that uh, at least that some sight, line of sight. And then obviously it's the normal breakdown of where the revenue allocations are coming from. Primary energy, obviously, always the big ticket item with coal, and there's the operating expense, and those things will get very focused on as we go, go into the sort of public participation. Should, should there be so much for coal? Should there be so many, many billions for employee expenses? And then obviously the other big items, you know, that people always look at are the, 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 the return on the assets, and also the uh, depreciation charge. So those will always be interrogated along with, as I mentioned, the clawbacks, the RCAs, and those will be discussed. So those, but the big innovation, I think, and the big change is to have this line of sight of the, of the three operating uh, subsidiaries. What happens now? Well, the, the next step is for NERSA to allow for public to respond. So they've given a, a certain period where written comments need to come in and that's over the next couple of months. And then um, in November and December, we'll go into the public hearing road shows. These will be physical public hearings, which we haven't had from NERSA for some time, starting in the Western Cape, ending in Gauteng, as is the tradition. And they're dedicating a couple of days, generally, in each province for it. So they're expecting a, a big response this time. Whether they'll have to use all the days, we'll have to wait and see. So that's the next step. Uh, let people make their written comments and then have the public hearings and then a determination will be made and the date for that is the, uh, December 20, so right before Christmas. What is the likely outcome? Well, I think the, no one expects Eskom to get the 36%. I think the application has been made in an environment where Eskom is trading as a business that's basically been, is only trading because of the taxpayer. It's received a 254 billion uh, bailout, well, debt, debt relief package, and that debt relief has enabled it to remain a going concern over the last couple of years. And as part of that bailout, you know, the Treasury says we can't have you continually driving up <laughs> the, uh, the, the motorway from Midrand to Pretoria and with your begging bowl and asking for more money. We need you to get your business, that your business pays for itself, washes its own face, and therefore the tariff, you need to get to a cost reflective tariff. So that's the sort of framing I think that Eskom is working within. They, they want to get out of trading under these conditions, which are quite have a, a number of conditions attached to, including the fact that they can't raise fresh debt. So for a business to operate, it's, it's, it's tricky. So they want to get out of the thumb of treasury. But to do it at the pace that they're looking at, I think is untenable for the country. I think that's the word that the electricity ministers already used, it's untenable to move to a 36% uh, step change. We've already had a step change in tariffs, but it, you know, we're coming from a base where the tariff was so sub-economic for so long, over so many decades, you know, where there, there was no sort of um, uh, change, because it was regulated, the, the change didn't reflect the costs, and especially the new build programs. But, but there's a, a lot of anger still in society around how that new build program was carried out, whether there were, how many of the corrupt contracts were in there. If that was, um, uh, uh, you know, if that was all taken out, <laughs> you know, what would the real prudent operating costs of Eskom be? And shouldn't we only be giving them prudent uh, pass-throughs to to the to the to the consumer? So there's going to be a lot of discussion around there, a lot of pushback. But South Africa can't bear, I don't think, uh, this sort of steep hike in one go. <clears throat> the problem is the navigating this, you know, because Eskom does need to get out of, uh, out of this situation where it's going to keep having to come back to the taxpayer for more and more support. So we have to find a way to what is Eskom's real costs? How, can they cut them in any way? How are they going to use the, the, the transition um, to help lower those costs? 
uh, across the board. And I don't think there's a lot of thought properly. The pencils haven't been properly sharpened. I think it's been survival mode. I think there really has to be, and people would really need to see that, that sharpening of pencils and the efficiencies and what we see we can really trust. So there's, there's a huge trust deficit around Eskim. So I think that's going to play out massively over the next few months. And then it's going to be interesting to see what uh, NERSA eventually determines. But what it does mean is that Eskim's going to have more RCA applications. If they do say Harvard or less than Harvard, there's going to be more RCA applications coming through because this is how the model works. There's going to be higher increases in the outer years because you've come with a lower increase in the first year. But I think for definite we'll say they won't get 36%. The issue is what, what is reasonable that they should get and what the country can and the economy can bear, but also doesn't put them back into this sliding down, back into a situation where they're going to have to get into their cars, up the motorway, to Treasury and say we need more money from the taxpayer. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.